you know, probably one of the, the greatest all-time great players in New Orleans is Johnny Kodakovich. Um, you know, he's truly an innovator. He's been playing in New Orleans music. He's born and raised in New Orleans. He's been uh, learning street beats from, from, the, from the time he was a very young kid. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to play with him for the last 40 years. <laughs> with a band called the Astro Project, you know. And uh, he's just a wonderful, great guy. And, he, and he's just got uh, um, uh, a, lot, a lot of information that he can, he can share. I'm sure we have a lot of questions for him. So how about a hand for Johnny the Doctor? How many people in this room are, are drummers, musician guys? So okay, that's good. We've got about five or six or seven. Great. And let's see, uh, let's see what other kind of instruments we've got. Like if you play piano or something, you get some piano players out there. That's pretty percussiveness, you know. Uh, what about guitar players? Good. 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 Bass players. Bass players. Bass, bass, bass players. All right. All right. All right. All right, and then we got some horn players, maybe. What else we got? Cool, cool, cool. Now, I'll tell you one thing that's a good exercise for drummers, and you probably, since I'm speaking to all kinds of different people, you can take this same principle and apply it because uh, it, it, it's really a, a process that we use when we play music. So right off the bat, you know, I, 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 I I'll tell you something that's that's a valuable exercise, and I guarantee you it will uh, uh, improve your playing, um, especially drummers. You drummers, you get with a horn player who who, who knows some standards, you know, or. Uh, Preferably a guy that's a little older than you that has a little more experience, you know, maybe knows more standards. And uh, you, uh, you, it's just, you know, just say, like, for example, you know, it could be any two instruments, but I'm, I'm going to use what I use because I'm, I'll say drums. Uh, so so j just use drums and say, like, I like, I, 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 there's this one guy, that it, it don't make a difference what kind of instrument it is, it's really the personality or person playing the instrument that's going to make, make this, this, this exercise uh, process valuable. Uh, so what you do is, the, the two of you, you get together and you, 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 know, you, you know, tell him, you know, you say, look, play some standards that you like, you know, you know, those good, uh, 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 popular standards that, you know, might have been uh, called at jam sessions 20 years ago, you know, because I think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, anyway, it's another subject, I can sidetrack. Anyway, so you, you get to, you know, you get together with, the, with, with your horn player friend who, who's a little older and smarter and wiser than you, and, and having play a standard songs, drums and saxophones, but telling, don't play the melody, just start like one, to a bang 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 ba da ba 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 you're going to want to figure out, you know, well, ho hopefully we've got the tempo together. It'd be even better if he doesn't count off tempo. You know, don't count off tempo. <laughs> just say, man, start playing the changes to, to a song. Don't tell me what the tempo is. Just start playing, you know. And so, so anyway, okay, now, 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 here's, now here's where the exercise starts to take, make, become valuable. What, what's happening now is while you're playing drums, you start, you got your, get your tempo together, you figure out where the beat is, you know, uh, 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 then, you have to kind of try to figure out what kind of song it is or what the song is, you know, you know, uh, you're going to be listening, you know, so what's going to happen is usually with piano players and guitar players in the band, they can give you the whole harmonic chord at one time, you know, if you ask a piano player, play me, uh, give me a C chord, he can go, jang, give you the whole notes at one time, very, what I call, what I call vertical. Uh, harmonic motion, uh, you know. Anyway, anyway, he can give you the whole quarter of time. But if you ask a horn player, 
give me a C chord, he's got to go da 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 He's got to arpeggiate it. He's got to play it linear. So that means that this, you know, jang, the C chord is now like this. So what it's what one of the valuable things of this exercise of playing with just a, a, a linear player, preferably a person that has to use air too, because now you can combine another element or that that would be valuable to you as drummers. The, the art of breathing, the art of what is a phrase. I've been teaching drums since I'm uh, 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 six, fifth, 16 years old. I got my first teaching job teaching. Uh, young kids like that, you know, and uh, half hour piece. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the first, uh, the fir the first thing you know you got you, we we learn is to play with somebody else. So while while you're discovering, trying to figure out now. What is he playing? Because you got to hear the chord, chord progressions, in, in, in a horizontal way. You can't, it's not as easy, you know, where a guy's playing it changes. Jing, 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 jing. You know, you can you'll be able to even hear, uh, you know, passing, uh, you know, the difference between the first end and the second end, and the second end, and it takes you to the bridge because you'll be able to hear that note. You know, because it's going to be a different note, right? Because the bridge usually go easy, it's something different. So if you play two A's, the second A is going to be. So as a drummer, you have to be, be able to detect all of this, you know, because you don't have any notes to hit. So you really don't, re really can't, unless you have perfect pitch. You really, you know, if, if you get lost in a whirlwind of notes and sound as a drummer, you kind of really lost because you don't have nothing to grab onto. To, to figure out what you know where you are, so you have to uh, recognize root movement. You know, and this will tell you where you are all the time. So anyway, now we are back to the exercise of learning to hear harmonic rhythm in a melodic way, in a lyrical way. If he's spelling out the chords for you. So this exercise will teach you to perceive a uh, 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 a harmonic rhythm not only vertically, which is very much uh, sympathetic to the way we play drums. Drums seems to be like a, 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 a vertical uh, kind of family instrument, even, even though I personally, I, I use both ways when I'm playing drum. I'm constant, constantly oscillating back and forth between perceiving the time and, and harmonically, you know, dun, dun, that to me that's the beats. The beats are really not pop 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 pop. That's the pulse in time, and I've grown up a little bit to where I don't have to pay attention so much to each each pulse. Now I can capsulize pulse all of these pulses into a melodic rhythmic. Phrase, a word you hardly ever hear a drummer say. So, that's true. I mean, I, can I just? I mean, that's please. an important thing that you're saying, man, about about phrasing. You know, and that's that's the thing that I'm finding with people that they know the scales. I'm talking about from a from a rock instrument. You know, know the scales and know the arpeggios and stuff like that, but they don't know how to make pleasing phrases. Now, how do you how do you tell a drummer to play a phrase because he's mainly keeping time? I mean, you, you, you say it's really important for them to, to to understand the structure of the tune. Yeah, I try to tell get... you you won't play a tune unless you really know the structure of a tune. You know, which is really amazing. You know, he, he, John, he has great ears; he can hear it. But he, but he also, when you hand him a piece of music, he's going to look at this piece of music as just like yeah. a structure, like a building. Or yeah, absolutely, you know. absolutely. I want you know, in case there's a fire, I want to know my way out. Absolutely, man. You know, I, I really think that you know, uh, uh, 
I'm, I'm not talking to a room full of drummers, so I'm trying to make it as, uh, as adaptable to, to your instrument and, and think of it more, 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 more as, as a process that we do. And, 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 and part of this process that we do, that I'm talking about, part of this process that I'm talking about is, 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 is the process we use when we play with somebody else. If we're playing alone, or so-called, the word practice, you know, uh, it, it, when we're doing that, you know, we're not, we're, we're not exercising this thing that is the, probably one of the most valuable things we need to have polished as, 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 as musicians. And that is uh, 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 the process of playing with somebody else means you have to sort of not be so much paying attention or, uh, you know, fully 100% uh, you know, into what you're doing. You might have to be, be trust yourself in all the time you put in your practicing. And you might have to trust, trust yourself that you're going to come up with something good because when you play with somebody else, it's, I think it's more, for me as a drummer especially, if you play any kind of instrument where you're in a where, you, where your main function, not your main function, but most of your function is an accompaniment mode, you know, for example, drums. You know, then you, you know the larger percentage of my musical input in the situation, the ratio of me thinking about what I'm playing as opposed to me thinking about, okay, why did the bass player, why did the bass player come back like that? Last night he wasn't like that. You know, I gotta figure out what I can adjust in my playing to, 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 to get us all back onto that, into making a groove, you know, to getting our, our beats, you know. And from night to night it's gonna be different, man. You know, you know, even if you're playing with the same guys, the same songs. You know, I mean, you, you know, you can come to gig one night and say, oh, boom, 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 and, 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 you, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, Wow, what's wrong? Last night we played this tune and the bass player was way up on top of the beat. Tonight the bass player is all behind the beat, you know, and, uh, you know, what's, what's up with the, oh, he had, he had a big fight with his girlfriend in the parking lot right, right before the gig. So he's on a gig with a bad attitude, you know. And then he's over oh, there with the wrong the piano player tonight. Man, he's rushing like crazy. You know, oh, he had three donuts before the gig. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's like, he's, he's, he's like cracked up. He's like cracked up on sugar. So you're trying to like, you, you're trying to make the piano player slow down a little bit. You're trying to, it, you know, inspired bass player, you know, to hey, get on a beat, bro. You know, uh, you know, so you have too many obligations as a, a drummer, not slash, or accompanist mode, when you're in the accompanist mode. And that could be anybody, come to think of it. It don't have to be a rhythm player to be an accompanist. Because we, we accompany each other, and, and, and man, we play with, man, and, and uh, you know, like, Tony's, man, he's fun to play, like drum solos, and Tony will play these notes and stuff behind me, sometimes just whole notes, sometimes he'll come in like a certain part and play, you know, maybe three half notes, some stuff like that, or, you know, or, or, or he'll play a hit or a phrase from the song, man, that's like, that's, that's, like, that's like gold, you know. So the process of playing with somebody else, it, you can't practice that, you got to go play with somebody else. And this process is dividing your attention. So now you're really going to put your muscle memory and all the hours you spent alone, you know, in, in a practice room. Um, 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 you know, you're going to take, you're going to take, and see what happens when you don't, when you're not, when you don't be so conscious of what you're playing and let your automatic. Uh, 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 Automatic, you know, auto muscle memory go on and let let it let it see if it, it, it can do its job, you know, you know, to um, 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 you know, hopefully you're gonna play something good, you know, um, and, 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 and that's that's not so much just for drummers, you know, I mean, that just ha it's just an attitude, and the attitude. In addition to the, I'm trying to, you know, tell you about the process of playing with somebody else, how you divide your energy, and how important this empathetic move is, how important this process is filled with empathy. It's an exercise in empathy, you know. The best accompanists are going to be the most empath empathetic, you know, and the 
ones who had the most experience at doing it. Well, I tell you, I was like, I don't know if he still comes around. Does Ellis still come around here anymore? Yeah, yeah. Man, you know, I know, I know Ellis since the early '60s, man, and like he's he's a master of accompaniment because he's played with so many different people, you know, through the years. You know, back in the game when I knew him, this was even before he got the gig with Al Hurd. <laughs> You know, everybody called Ellis when they got to town. Call Ellis, go see Ellis, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I mean, the art of accompaniment, man, you know, it, it, it requires you to have trust in your muscle memory system. So muscle, you know. That's, a, that's an important thing you, you said about the fact that, you know, for the most part, we practice by ourselves. But we don't have if we don't have the opportunity to play with other people. I mean, especially in jazz, because it's all about the interaction. Yeah, I find that this is true of like a lot of classical musicians that don't play, you know, that might play solo recitals and things like that, or people that play just solo instruments or or don't play with other people. They have a hard time playing and interacting with other people because they they don't, they don't ever do it. You know, they're only, they're only just playing by themselves. You know, so that's a really important thing about uh, that you said about. <coughs> Uh, it's not something, well, it's something you have to experience because everybody, every interaction you're going to have with every different person is going to be different. Absolutely. Boy, and, and this is going to be the joy, too, of starting to this kind of exercise because you'll start to learn another thing, how to read body language, how to pick up on a cat's vibe. You're going to notice, man, guys are different, people are different. What, what turns one cat on will totally turn another cat off. One cat wants to be wants you to uh, accompany him and support him, and don't don't f don't trick him up, don't get him tangled up. Another cat wants you to kick butt, man, knock him down, beat this, go crazy on the drums when I play a solo. You know, yeah, you know, he really wants you. To, you know, you know, I've had, I've, man, I played with Dizzy Gillespie when I was when I was uh, uh, 21 years old. I got, I got called to play in a rhythm section with Dizzy Gillespie and Bobby Hackett was playing cornet, famous old cornet player, and Dizzy Gillespie. And, and, I was in, and I got called to play in a rhythm section. And, and we played a couple of tunes, Autumn Leaves, and, he, and he, I think he might have played Oleo or something like that. And then about midway into the set, he calls a ballad, something like uh, uh, you know, a Stardust or something like that. And uh, uh, so I pick up a pair of brushes, and uh, he turns around to me and goes, sticks, sticks, you know? I said, well, really, man? <laughs> yeah, sticks, man. Yeah. And on a ballad, you know? So everybody's different. You know, most guys will turn around and say, hey, what are you doing, man? This is a ballad. Be quiet back there, you know? This sounds like you've fallen down a flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ballad, kid. What you doing? Make soup. That's what the old man used to tell me. Make soup. That they call it. <laughs> hey, kid, make soup. Tell the kid, make soup. Oh, he's, oh yeah. Who's that? <laughs> Who's he? Well, man, one of the things that, I mean, if I can interject again. Please. I mean, the thing that always impressed me by Johnny, I mean, of, of all the great drums I play with, is, is, the, is the idea of the word, like you were talking about before, empathy. You know, Johnny is such a supportive accompanist, and, and he, can, he can read you, and he can read the music, and, he, and, and uh, how, do you, how do you tell a drummer to effectively do what you do? <laughs> Basically, um, you know what I'm talking about? It's, yeah. like, it's not something I can really easily I, I, Well, I, I, I tell him, first of all, don't listen to a lot of drummers. Hey. Stop listening to drummers. <laughs> you know? Stop listening to drummers. Get away from drummers. Stop hanging out with drummers. You know? Uh, 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 you're going to be more... You need to get... This. Unfortunately, the drums have... It, it's so clicked. It's such a brotherhood... Uh, uh, that you can get hung up in it, and that's what you don't want to do, I don't think, if you want to be a musician. And, you know, I've used this example many times. I say there's like a room, and it's filled with drummers, and they got some good drummers, some medium drummers, some great drummers, and some phenomenal drummers. And there's a ceiling. And right above that, there's another room, and it's filled with musicians. <laughs> <laughs> the object 
magic of playing the drums is, and, and to be a good to be a good musician slash drummer, you don't need to be a great drummer. You just need to be a mediocre drummer, and you can be a great musician. You know. Uh, so what happens is I tell guys, you know, as soon as you get good, you know, fairly good enough, and you got a little bit under your belt, get away out of that room and start hanging out with those musicians. Be around them, talk to them, listen to everything they say, listen to what they're listening to. You know, forget listening. So I, I don't get hung up too much in your own instrument, or else you you could stand the possibility of someone sounding like they playing this guy's licks, or you know, they playing too too much already. What's been put? Uh, you you sometimes take on the wrong identity. Where I think in life, you know, you know we have uh, uh, what I call external knowledge, and that's like you know, say like books and teachers, and records, and having a favorite, uh, uh, you know, in my case, say a drummer, you know, a, f a favorite drummers that I, that I would listen to, and, uh, you know, try to imitate their licks, or try to imitate their feeling, or their sound, you know. Uh, 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 so, I, that's external knowledge, you know, teachers right now, this is external knowledge. So we're constantly gathering external knowledge, you know, uh, to, 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 you know, we put it all together and we play, and we play stuff. But at some point in your life, at some point in your life, I think that you need to go on the inside and go for that internal knowledge. And I think that's the thing that, that makes you who you are. You know, that's the thing we all want to be. I want to find my own voice. I want to have my own style. Well, you're not going to get it by, you know, transcribing Steve Gadd solos. You know, and if you put a solo, and this is a truth too, somebody did it. They put this music in front of Alvin Jones, you know, and said, could you play this for me, please? And he said, man, I can't play that. And the guy says, well, man, you did. It's a, I transcribed this solo off of Sonny Rollins. Like, and this is you playing. It's just, I can't play that, man. I don't even remember playing that. <laughs> you know? So um, what I did when I was young, I transcribed a few drum solos, you know, oh, 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 eights and fours, Philly Joe, Tony Williams, a couple other drummers I, I liked. You know, it's very <coughs> Less than a year did I deal with that stuff. Because it always stands out the mechanical when you went to play it anyway. So what I did was I transcribed and wrote down, not the notes so much, but I wrote down the rhythms of what Thelonious Monk was playing on the piano. I wrote down the rhythms of what Stan Getz and Charlie Rouse were playing on the saxophone. I wrote down the rhythms of what Bill Evans was playing on the piano. And then I would take those rhythms and put them on the stand, try to sing them, you know, ba do ba dee dee ba da ba 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 and one and two and three and four, one and two and. And I'm 18, 19, 20 years old doing this, you know. So now I'm kind of teaching myself phrasing, and didn't even know it, you know. I was just trying to uh, not want, wanting to play drum solos like everybody else was doing around me, you know. I said, I don't know what everybody else is doing. You know, they're already doing that, all, all my drummer friends. And I said, I want to get some different, different kinds of, I want to look at it from a different perspective. You know? Uh, and it didn't take, you know, and, 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 and uh, when I was in college, I lived with a, 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 a lady who was uh, uh, majoring in voice, and she, and, and she, and she was an opera singer, and she practiced a lot, you know, really up because you know your body, your instrument. So you, really, I mean, she was practicing all the time. So just by being around her, I learned a lot of things about shape, about volume, about space and silence, and uh, I just. 
just learned a lot. I just learned, I just started, I didn't know it, but I, I was perceiving things in a lyrical way, in a, in a linear way, in a horizontal way, in a, in a melodic, what I like to call melodic rhythm. It's horizontal, harmonic rhythm, it's vertical, the chord changes, you know. That could be my beat, the changes, so that we don't have to keep track of every beat. You know, I advise everybody to listen to other instruments. Oh, all right, so let me continue. What would I do? Where I meant, then I said, listen, bro, uh, don't go hear your favorite band. All right, you got to get a ticket, and you got to go to the symphony. You know, you got to go hear an orchestra. And you have to be in the room so you can understand the difference in colors and timbres, and you can feel the molecular structures of the sound waves that those particular instruments produce. You can feel this. You know, I try to constantly remind people that, that this music is very much a science and it's a real thing. You know, uh, some of us think that music is mystical and mysterious. It's not. It's organized molecular structures and sound waves that, that, go, that are in the, in, in the air between you and I. And it travels like that and it actually <coughs> touches you. It actually goes into you. It, it's made up of the very same thing you are. We're all a bunch of vibrating, massive uh, molecules of sound waves. That's what we are. You know, I, I always say to myself, you know, the, the, the whole world is built on sound. You know, it's vibrating. Uh, unfortunately, our species, the human species, is just not sophisticated enough to detect, to see music. We can hear it. We can feel it, but we think we're feeling it. But we, but see, you know, I mean feeling as in soul. No, man, you're really feeling it. You know, you are actually feeling the molecules touching your skin. But then again, you just don't have enough sophisticated enough species to realize that. We haven't contemplated that enough. You know, our species is overrated. <laughs> you know? Music is a very real thing, you know. You can touch it, but you just can't, we can't see it, you know. So, so, just don't have good enough eyes, you know, or something. Um, oh, that's it. Uh, uh, and what else, I saw, I would tell him you have to go to the orchestra. And I would tell anybody this, you know, if you want to be a better player, especially a jazz player, man, you want colors, you want inspiration, you want food to uh, inspire you to play creative things, you know? This takes, this takes food and energy and fuel, you know, and, and that comes in, comes in the form of keeping your imagination really well stimulated, you know? Uh, also, I think, especially for drummers, because it's such a physical instrument, you know, you're literally dancing on the drums. You know, you're basically tap dancing on the drums when you play drums. So you have to think like a, like a, like a dancer. I had a girlfriend one time. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, now that you mentioned that, she's a dancer. She's, I, you know, when we played with Brian Blade the other day, he, I, I told him to say, well, you know, Johnny was a world, you know, award-winning. Roller skater when he was a kid. Brian didn't know that, yeah. you know, But I said, I, you know, and you you attribute a lot of your moment. You're so animated about the way you walk around and the way you play the drums and stuff like that. You think that that the roller skating thing as a kid might have had something to do with that? Like, uh, yeah, know? yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. You know, I was good at it. I worked hard at it. I spent a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to be where I got, mm -hmm. you know, before I quit skating. But your emotions are so fluid, you know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a very drums, fluid you know? thing, man, and it has to be done totally fluid or else you can't pull it off, you know, mm -hmm. freestyle skate. You know, yeah, I, I attribute a lot to that, you know. I, I, I don't realize it, you know, until you bring it up like that, mm -hmm. yeah, because I always forget about that far, part of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. How old were you when, when, when all that happened? 10, 11, and 12. Yeah, is that before you started playing drums? I was, I was playing drums a little bit at the time, typically <coughs> tapping on the drums, but nothing serious. I was not serious about playing the drums until I, I, I decided not to skate anymore. Cool. So, yeah, yes, but I do attribute, I do attribute, attribute it, uh, 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 some of my playing and my approach uh, to, to those many hours of 
of hard practice and, and getting fluid in skating, you know, and, and boy, that, that had to be, you know, that had to be worked for. That was nothing easily earned. That took a lot of bruises, bro. Lots of bruises. It was hard work, you know. But I did it, and I got where I wanted to be, and I got as, all of a sudden my mind just changed, man, and I just dove directly into music very deeply, you know. I don't know how and why, but, I was young, you know, when you're young, you just kind of follow your, your, your follow, the, follow the path, I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, and so what else would I tell, I tell a, a person, you know, like, to stimulate your ideas of the, the way I do mine? I think that you need to remember all them cartoons you watched when you were kids sitting in front of TV. You didn't waste time. <laughs> That's all food to stimulate your imagination, man. Re, you know, remember these things. You know, try to remember these. All of these things. Have, you know, our whole world is full of uh, 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 mu musical things that 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 I try to constantly, uh, 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 you know, use in an abstract way to make it music. I think that everything around us should be able to sing a song to us. If we look at that chair long enough and say, okay, Steve, look at that chair for the next uh, th uh, four minutes or so, and then I want, you, want you, I want you to sing me some kind of little song or something about that chair. It don't have to be words. It can be, you know, it can be, it can be, and that's what the chair sang to me. And I, and I, and I, and I had a reason for every part of, of what I was phrasing. I had a phrase for the for the four legs, I had a phrase for the seat, and I had a phrase, and I had, I had, I had a, 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 a final phrase to try to end it, you know, properly using the bat. So everything should be creative to you, you know. You should, you should. Uh, uh, I, I had one, one, one of the drum exercises, and you don't have to play drums to do this. You know, I mean, you could do it on any instrument. Before I play the tune, I sing and dance the tune. Then without losing the beat, I hurry up and jump down behind the drums and play with my mouth still, with my mouth and my stomach still working. Well, I say stomach because breathing is so important, even for a drummer. To play good time, you gotta breathe from your diaphragm. And so you can get that beat back there, bro. You get, you know. Even if you're on top of the beat, you still wanna, you know, have, have, have it, you know, on the back. So you've got a nice fat beat. You know, and I mean, don't have to, it don't have to be drums. It can be any instrument. The idea is that, the idea is, uh, you know, is, is based off of the fact that, and I, th I think this is one form or another relates to every instrument, so you can apply it to your instrument or your vocal instrument or whatever, whatever instrument you play. Uh, like, for example, I'm going to tell the cat, so listen, bro, you came in here to play the drums, I'm going to tell you something right now. First of all, in the entire picture, the drums is only 49%. And that's the most, that's the maximum it could be, is, it can be, is 49% of the picture. You, minimum in a picture, the least you can be is 51%. That means the drums are actually coming from you. That's just a bunch of shiny, costly stuff <laughs> that makes a lot of noise. It's intimidating, you know, uh, and also uh, 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 it's difficult to play music on them because they don't have any notes. So you got you got a lot. Of, the only thing you got going is man, what's inside of you. So it's not about learning how you know. A lot of guys think they learn how to play the drums, man, and the drums are just playing them. They're just fighting it, fighting it. No, you, you gotta have it in here first. So the exercise that I say anybody can use with whatever instrument you play. Keep yourself arrangement, 
a simple song because you don't you want to make it easy so that when you make variations improvisations when you start to improvise on it it would be an easy enough tune to where you won't have to worry about oh boy what part of the tune is tune so hard on the ground no make it a simple song you know and, 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 and you, I, I would say uh, I, I, you know and usually I, I, I give them like a, like a song with two halves you know, uh, if not happy birthday, uh Saint Thomas. They're the same song, actually, as far as you know, in my in the way I'm perceiving it. They both have two halves and they both have four phrases. Da 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 second half, da 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 da. Four phrases, two halves. Da 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 second half. Da 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 da. Same exact, same exact, same exact structure, same exact structure. All right. So I would tell, I would tell. Here's what I do. I tell. I say. Go and you get the instrument. And before, no, not before, because this is actually part of the tune. This is my stick bag. <laughs> Whoa, somebody left me a pound of sticks. Cool. All right, so you know, I say, you know, uh, 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 you know, depending on which, if you play guitar, that's cool. You know, have it nearby, have it resting on your leg. You know, but the, the idea is uh, that your body is the instrument, you know. So I, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll take uh, <clears throat> ba -ba 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 the St. Thomas, and, and I'm going to use that as, as what I'm going to song. So, now here's what I do. The first chorus, I... Stand close to the drums, getting ready to play. Go through the song and get it in my body. Get it in my body. Get it in my molecules. Are already will be vibrating with the song. The song will come from with come through me. You know, it'll sound like it's coming from me, but it's coming through me because I'm accessing the imaginative imagination and all the real vibrations that are still ringing from guys who played notes many moons ago. That's a whole nother story. Okay, anyway, so the exercise goes like this. F number one course, I get into my body, stand close, make sure, the, make sure the song, I can feel it, make sure, you know, I ha I, I'm, I'm, I'm having some sort of attack, I'm feeling it, you know, make sure I'm developing some form of passion. You know, I don't care what, what, what form of passion, you know. Anyway, so the second course will be the melody with me playing the drums, but the melody coming from my mouth and my stomach. The third course will be the bebop or the jazz or the improvisation, which will be basically variations on a, on, on a melody. That's all, that's basically, for me, just the way I, I see jazz, is a bunch of variations on a melody. And, you know, so, you know, you can stick in some creative stuff too and make it fit. The guys is a combination of both, having a nice recipe, a nice mixture for both, you know. A cup of this, a cup of that. Let's connect the bass and pedal. All right. And, and I'm going to show you real quick how I, I do the exercise. And I heard, you know, I, I said try it out with your own instrument, you know. But you want to make sure the purpose of the exercise is for you to realize that you are the greater percentage of your instrument. Don't let that instrument intimidate you. Don't fight with it. Because you, if you fight with it, it's winning. Because it, cause it knows it can't beat you. So you're being tricked by your instrument if you say, oh, man, uh, it's hard. Oh, man, I don't ever say that. You say, you know, you're tricking me, you know. I, so I say to myself, here's the way I do the exercise. And, and now, you also, to play music, man, to improvise, you have to, uh, you have to, you know, you can be cool, you know. You know, man, but you also have to just be real. You got to be yourself. So you have to, you have to access your youth. Remember, remember when you were younger and you were less inhibit, inhibited? Is that the right word? 
inhibit, you know, no, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. You got to think young, man. You got to think like you're not, you know, being cool is not really necessary. You know, being cool is backing up, you know. <clears throat> All right, so here's how, here's how, and this goes for any instrument. I don't care what you play. You know, just be ready to grab it to get in on one. I start getting, I start getting in towards the end of the tune, towards the end of the first chord. All right, here we go. The exercise. So the exercise seems to be like it's going to be one chorus of me getting it together, becoming it, loving it. Second chorus is going to be more the melody with a beat. Third chorus will be a solo. The fourth chorus will be back to more or less the melody and you know the way out. So that's that's the arrangement. Four choruses, and, I, and I'll use I can either use St. Thomas or Happy Birthday because they both form four phrases, two halves. I'll, I'll go with St. Thomas today for kicks. Yesterday I did Happy Birthday all day. <laughs> I feel like I'm a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's all right. Ha sang ding ding Somebody's gonna say you ain't all that cool. It's just it's just the way the nature of uh, of balance. Anybody got any questions? Go ahead. How much do you like to talk about the music before you play it with people? Do you like to talk about it, or do you just like to just get right into it and play? Depends on the music of people. Uh, it's in general, I don't like to talk about it at all. I don't even like to know what it is. In general, from, from my from my what what you know, my, my favorite fun is not knowing at all what's gonna happen. It might even not even know who I'm gonna play with, you know, so I can take it to that stream. It's kind of a general question. Because the answer would rely would, 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 for me would rely this do we need to talk what do we need to talk about? Is there something we don't understand? Then we, then I would want to talk about it. If I didn't understand something about some music that was specifically had one repeat or two repeats, or does it go back to the half? You know, uh, uh, I would talk. What, what, what do you think? What do you think I would talk? What do you think we would talk about? Let me ask you. What What is that to talk about? We're getting ready to play music. Uh, do I like to talk about the music before I go play? Was that your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do I? Uh, uh, well. I don't see any need to unless there's a need to, as in what I just said. So now I ask you again, what do you think we would talk about? Well, usually like technical stuff, but then some people like to talk about aesthetics. 
you know, like, like, what do you like to hear? Like, you know, what do you want me to Oh, no. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Hey, man, I have to jump in again, man. Do you remember the first time you ever played with me? The first time? I know you probably don't remember. Was, was it Lou and Charles? No, it was, it was Ford's place. It was around Jimmy's. the block from Tipitina's. Okay. And it was with this piano player named Stuart. And it was the first time I ever played with him. We were like just totally. Yeah, okay, he yeah. called you. He was brave enough to call you. I forgot. And forgot called you to do this gig. And uh -huh. sometimes Red, Red Tyler used to deliver liquor to the place. Sometimes Red would come and sit in with us uh -huh. or whatever. But the most fascinating thing, you know, we're like, Johnny was like our hero, you know what I mean? And it's just like, man, I'm going to be playing with this guy. I can't believe it, you know? And, and the thing that was really astounding to me was the fact that we played probably about two or three weeks where you played and didn't say a word. None of it, nobody talked about the music, nobody, nobody talked to Johnny. <laughs> but we just played like, like probably three, three gigs and nobody ever got the courage to even talk. And you didn't say anything and just played just the hell out of the drums. And it was just like, I, I found that really refreshing, the fact that we weren't like trying to like figure out like what you wanted to hear, or what we wanted uh -huh. you to play, blah, 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 whatever. It was just like the music just happened and we, everything that we communicated was just completely uh, by, by musical terms, you yeah. know? We didn't talk about anything. But that, that really struck me because it was like, wow, man, you know, really good talking to guy. <laughs> Too, you know. Well, but it was, I promise you I wasn't trying to be rude. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, you probably said, what am I doing playing this game with these cats? <laughs> uh, now, y'all had a hip repertoire, you can't have That's a great repertoire, well, man. Hey, Ford's place. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jimmy right. Ford. Yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah. I, I don't want to play that. Yeah. I, but that's interesting because what with, with, uh, Joe was talking about because it, it, that struck me about that first time we played. It's just like, yeah, we just played music and didn't say a word before, would, or that, after, that, during the breaks or anything like that. Yeah, that, that would mess me up, man. That would mess me up. That would mess me up, man. You know, I'd have me, me drinking. Probably depends on the music too. I mean, yeah, how complicated yeah. it is. I mean, you know, we were just playing standards and stuff. But, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But just, no, but he said like talk about this, talk about the aesthetics or or what I might want to hear. Oh no, 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 please, Johnny, don't say what I want to hear. You know, I'm not. And, and if you say it, then I'm gonna. Go, oh man, what's this? You know, then why did you hire me? <laughs> What'd you call me for? You know, no, 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 no. That would spoil it for me. Totally spoil it. Yeah, that would totally just take the fun out of it. Take the surprise out of it. I, I, I you know, I, I enjoy the. Uh, I enjoy uh, you know being surprised, and uh, sometimes I think that brings out. Uh, uh, that's why. That's why I said, don't listen to, to people that play your own instrument. Don't go around. And listen, don't listen to too many drummers. Are you going to sound like another drummer? You know. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, and what, what, you know, you are. It's like the food you eat is what you are. You know, and stuff. Like, everything is like that. You know. So I you really got to be careful. With me, at least, you know. What, what's said before before I sit down and play, because man, uh, that you know, I mean, say if a cat tells me, oh, I think it feels too fast, oh, I think it feels too slow. Now we got a problem. First of all, you all are talking, and neither one of you guys are counting off a tempo. Second of all, you're saying, I think. What the fuck? Excuse me. What the hell do you know? <laughs> you're saying you think. Man, I'll be thinking out loud and thinking something you, you do soft or uh, like don't move your mouth when you think. Can't be moving his mouth when he's thinking. Hey, that's, that's messed up right there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> kind of also opens you up to being judgmental. And I, th I feel like that's one thing about you, too. You, you, you just seem to just... Whatever situation you're in musically, you just deal with it, you know, and you're not judgmental about it. You know? Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that's that's one of the things that I found hard about teaching, because I always felt like when you're teaching, it kind of puts the teacher in this role of being making judgments. You know, you got to get grades, you got to tell people, give people yeah. criticism, and all that stuff. And that always really bothered me about that being a musician, just getting into that whole realm of being judgmental. You know, and it's this is such it's such a freedom in not being judgmental. Yeah, things. yeah. And, and hope, and, and you know, I mean, and, and, and 
I, I, yeah, the, 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 that, that, that affects me too, you know, and, 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 and I'm lucky enough that my wife realized a long time ago, like 35, 40 years ago, she, she realized, man, don't ever let Johnny read a review. Just get the magazine out of the house, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I have another question, because uh, you told me about a while ago about uh, like playing bravado, you know, playing, uh, you know, just moving the pulse a little bit here and there mm -hmm. to like make room for the music. Do you also think about playing like ahead of the beat, behind the beat, or the relationship of you, like your time to that of the other soloist? Or do you uh, yeah, like, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, just constantly variating, you know, and uh, I'm constantly on the lookout uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 for things uh, that require some, some, that to be attended to, you know. Uh, as I'm playing, that's, that's, see, that's another part of the percentage that, you know, thinking about what you're playing, because you're busy, like, Seeing where this beat is on top, you know what we're gonna do with what we're gonna do with the beat, just right now, because it's gonna change from night to night, tune to tune. You know, it's constantly gonna change. You know, so I mean, I mean, uh, that's that's one of the things that 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 is that is that's, that that's in in the percentage part of not thinking about drums, because you're thinking about what the other people are doing. You know, where they're at and what you got to do to remedy the situation, or what you can do to you know to make the situation more comfortable. So you think that being a drummer, being a company in this, is like being a problem solver in general for the band? Just Pro like listening to when there's stuff happening and like trying to do what you can to like Absolutely. make everything sound Absolutely, good. it's your job, it's your obligation. Yeah, you signed up for that. Can <laughs> <laughs> read the small print? That's <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> you signed up for, bro. And anything goes wrong, by the way, it's your fault. <laughs> that hasn't changed in a couple hundred years. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, okay, what else can we talk about? I wanted you to talk just a little bit about the fact, I mean, Johnny, to me, is like, I mean, is the most, one of the most melodic drummers I've ever heard, you know, like, when you take the solo, you don't play rhythms and polyrhythms and stuff, like, you play melodies, you know? Could, could you demonstrate playing just playing the melody of a ballad sure. or something like that? Sure. I don't know what sure. Folks are sure. Know, whatever, sure. Whatever, whatever sure. 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 Yeah, and, and different songs, I you know, uh, 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 require different methods and different processes by which I do this. You know, like like say like uh, the, the the process that I'm using say like for uh, for like what I just did say St. Thomas versus the process that I use to play uh what's that tune you wrote it's like one two three four one two three four dang dang oh uh open space dang dang what's the name of that open space open that's space. it open yes. space okay the pr now that tune that tune has eight bar phrases and it has some seven bar phrases because of nine bar phrases and some ten bar phrases it's got a bunch of different things yeah. So but when he first broke, broke that tune, I, I grabbed that piece of music and I took that home. You know, so that had I, I had I had to I had to uh, learn because and then it had the thing going on with the tonality and I don't have any notes to hold on to and if, the, if the, them solos would be get going around and around in circles like that, I would maybe lose a sense of what half of the song I'm on and not not have any notes to relate to. I would had I had to go home and. Uh, 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 first, I, first, I got first. I mapped out the uh, the numbers of bar, uh, the phrases, and put phrase marks over the bars and where I thought the phrases should be. You know, so I I I, I was looking at that song, song uh, playing that song like going into a house, man, with you know, with no furniture, but knowing where all the windows are, you know, and you know, and, you know, and it was a multi-level kind of house, you know. I had to really, you know, put work into that. In 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 in, in the case of uh, 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 structure and in the case of tonality, because the tonality was it is complex chords, these compound chords and shit. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> compound chords, you know, and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, so I, I had then I had to take the bass notes 
and listen and go over the bass notes all, so I could start to hear the when I hear this bass note, oh, I, then I know I'm going here, you know. So I would look for key, just like when I played timp timpani and symphony, man. In the old days, the timpani, you know, the timpani, we didn't have these real good tuners on. You had to use your ear, you know. So I mean, just like timpani, man. I, you know, I, I would, you know, if I knew I had to make a change, like change one drum from a F from an F to a B flat for upcoming se session section, uh, then and, you know, I, it's, you know, I, I couldn't make noise. You know, tap the timpani while 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 a piece is going on. So I would look at the score and see who had a G near me <laughs> at some other part in the song, and I would look at him when he played when he played that G, and I would key in on that pitch, and then I'd go put my ear by the timpani. You know. And, and while the music was playing, try to get that to G, to get that G ready for the upcoming session. So why don't I tell a story? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about you, you, you being melodic on a drum. I, one, I, one, I, 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 one of the interesting things too is the fact that because you play so melodically, or you know, or sometimes we play like sort of an asymmetrical tune, like open space or whatever. And with the Astro Project, I think it's kind of interesting that if anybody sees us play, a lot of times. We comp for the drum solos. A yeah. Lot of times, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's happened. It's so happened. We play chords for the drums. It's know? happened. It's happened. Yeah. It's happened. See, we, see, with, with guys like that, man, uh, and we, uh, I mean, we're experiencing something that uh, the greatest musicians in the world have not, will not get to have the luck that we had. The luxury, the luck of playing with the same guys over 40, 40 something years. You know, and also at you know in 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 the middle of our lives, and, and you know from the time we we're in our twenties to the time we we're in our thirties. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's start in kindergarten. <laughs> and, and anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, develop, uh, according to the song, I use a different process to, uh, to 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 be melodic about it with that song. Yeah, it, that that I had to do homework on that one. Other other ones, it's usually uh, you know you know uh, you you find categories that the songs are going to fall into, like uh, 32 bar songs. Are, you know, going to be quite common. Uh, not uh, less and less, but. Uh, 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 that, that, that's a very common, quite category, and inside that co category, you subdivide as a drummer. You subdivide that to: is this a 32 bar song? It's A A B A, or is this a 32 bar song with two 16 bar halves? You know, and you know, then you figure that out. Then you uh, start figuring out. Uh, you know, make sure you can hear the the second two measures and the second eight bar phrase will tell you uh, that you're going to go to the second half. And in case you get lost, it, it reminds you that you're not going back to, you know, uh, that the, uh, uh, the cadence will be at the end of the song. So, so the cadence at the, at the end of the second eight bars is going to be different than the cadence at the, at, at, at the, at, at the end, at the last couple of bars, that half, the second half. The end of the first half is different than the end of the second half because it's going to be like that. Okay, so, you know, yeah, yeah, all right. So, you know, I, I'm going to, uh, you, you, uh, most of the practice, and say, say if I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, if, if I was playing St. Thomas, you know, I'm, uh, and, 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 and I'm thinking of it melodically, I, you know, I'm, 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 basically what I have to do is, and this comes, and it, I'll tell you what helped me out here is, uh, for, you know, the, the first two and a half years of, a severe five days a week, theory class, four part writing, you know. Every day I had to, you know, you had to bring in an assignment. And, and, and that helped me in the whole idea of thinking in variations. You know, I think Bach is really a great uh, tool for drummers because you, you see how to improvise, I mean, how to make variations improvising. And so for, basically for me, I, I, you know, I can approach uh, St. Thomas two ways. Uh, harmonically, because it's you know pretty easy changes to hear, you know, it's that three six two five one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that and, you know, so it's easily to hear it harmonically, and it's fun to hear it rhythmically. And I think it's a good appetizer for a drummer because that the, the, the rhythm of that. Oh, this is just for. <laughs> Oh, I bought it. Talk about a fool. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, I like the rhythm. I just like that one part. <laughs> yeah, so that right there, man, I, I can have a ball with that, you know. And so then it's a question of keeping your place. So that's why I'm so much into breathing and playing with your friend who plays the horn with a mouthpiece. Imagine a drum set that has a mouthpiece. Imagine your guitar ha has a mouthpiece and you have to blow air into it to play it. I think, I think you, you start finding yourself getting a little bit more linear and lyrical. And, may, and God have mercy, you might even sound pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so I, you know, this is what I would do. Before I sit down, two, I get, 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 being somewhere between being Oh, well, yeah, that's in the crack. Down. That's in the crack, but we all do that. In the crack. Yeah, that's... Man, God, guys pick... I remember back in the 80s and the 90s, man, they would just... You know, they just fly you up to New York to play a, a street beat. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, but, but, yeah, it, in the crack is, is, is that. And we, we do it very naturally. You know, it's sort of like a, a lazy rock and roll. Uh, uh, or it's sort of like an open shuffle, or it's not quite eighth notes, and it's not quite triplets, or somewhere in between. Uh, the, a great example of that feeling is the tune. Ba, 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 ba. Cakewalk, I think is the name of it. Yeah, Cakewalk, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know. Okay, that's 
it's triplets, eighth notes, and sixteen notes, right? So, basically, I mean, say you get, you get this.